Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Recently, a viewer commented one of my videos asking how to download and install my configuration files from my GitLab repository. So today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get to it. So I'm in a brand new installation of Arch Linux. It's a pure base installation. The only thing I did, which I don't normally do, so normally after the fact, I go and manually make a username after my installation. That is, I manually make a username. I give them a password and I give them sudo privileges. This time I allowed the installer to create a username for me and to give them a password and to give them sudo privileges. And like I said, normally I don't do it that way, but this time I did. So like I said, uh, and, and I gave a user, or I allowed the installer to give me the username John. Now, John is not my real name, but there's a reason why I did John instead of Mench. Because I don't want to be confused between John's home folder and the Mench folder I'm going to download from my GitLab repository. So I didn't install any packages. There's no desktop environment. There's no login manager. There's no window managers. There's no packages. There's no Firefox. There's no nothing installed. The only thing I installed when I made a, when I created this installation of Arch Linux was Vim. In the automated installer, I chose to install Vim. That's it. So I booted into the freshly installed system. And of course, I'm in a TTY. And I apologize for the small font because at this point, I don't know how to make the font bigger. So if I do ls-a, there's very little in my home folder. So first thing I want to do is I want to make a folder called .config. I'm going to type in make beer .config. Oops, I should spell it right. Now, if you're downloading my uh, configuration files from my GitLab repository into Linux Mint or Manjaro or a fully installed operating system, you don't have to make a dot config folder. It will already be there. I am making a dot config folder because this is a purely base installation of Arch Linux and there's no folders in my home folder. So I'm making it. But like I said, if you're doing this in Linux Mint, MX Linux, Manjaro, any fully installed running operating system, the will already be a doc config folder in there. So anyways, I typed in make dir doc config. Let's enter it. LS it, let's dash eight. And now I have a doc config folder. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is install Git. Cause you can't download my GitLab repository unless you have Git installed. So I'm gonna do sudo, let's clear the screen. I'm gonna do sudo pacman dash capital S and get and I'm going to click OK TS and it's installing Git. So now it gets installed and I'm going to type in this command git clone https full colon slash slash gitlab dot com slash artibus one slash Mench dot get. So if I typed it right, when I hit enter, it's going to take a second and it's going to download all my configuration files from my GitLab repository. Now, if you think this command is too hard to remember or too hard to type in, you can go to any of my videos on YouTube, go into the show notes, and in the show notes, I always have this command in there. You can go into the show notes. So for instance, if you're running a fully installed system and you have a web browser, a Firefox or whatever, go into the show notes of any of my videos, copy this line and paste it into the terminal. First, you have to install Git and then go there, copy this line and paste it into the terminal. And that way you don't have to type it out. So anyways, if I typed it right, it should download my GitLab repository in less than a second. So let's see if it works. And there it is. It's downloaded. So let's ls, let's clear the screen. Let's ls dash a. 
and you can see Mensch has a folder now. So that's why I made the user John. I didn't want to confuse John and Mensch. So we have a folder now. So let's cd into Mensch. Let's clear the screen. ls-a. So if you ever downloaded my uh, GitLab repository before today, you're going to see it's a lot different. Because this morning before I made these videos, I cleaned up my Mensch directory in my GitLab repository. I did a major cleanup. So it's going to look different. Now, let's clear the screen. So before I clear the screen, you see I have uh, only two files in here. On the far right, I have README and License. And then I have three folders. I have an Arch Linux folder, I have a Debian folder, and I have a FreeBSD folder. And the reason why I have those folders is that my files and configuration files and stuff are different depending on whether you're installing them in Debian, FreeBSD, or Arch Linux. Now, let's clear the screen for a minute. Now, let's say you already downloaded my GitLab repository uh, a long time ago. And you want to update it to the way I cleaned it up today. You would type in this command, git, first of all, before you do that, when you're in your home folder, you'll have to cd into mensh. Then you would type in git pull. And you're going to hit enter. Now, as you can see on the top of the screen, it says already up to date right here. Already up to date because we just downloaded it. But if you downloaded it, before today, then what it's going to do, it's going to update your whole Mensch folder and make it the way mine is today. Now, if you downloaded my uh, GitLab repository in the past and you installed my packages and you installed my favorite apps and you installed my configuration files and copied my configuration files into your home folder or into the other folders where they belong and you download my and you update and you update my GitLab repository today, that won't change any of the apps that you installed or any of the configuration files that you copied into the correct folders. That won't change anything. The only thing it's going to change is it's going to change your Mitch folder. So if I deleted files or added files or changed files or reorganized my files, it's going to make your mesh folder the same as the mesh folder that I have in my GitLab repository. But it won't change any files that you copied into the correct folders. So I hope that's clear, if that makes sense. So anyways, I'm gonna clear the screen and I'm gonna do um, ls-a. Like I said, I have three folders. So let's go into the Arch folder. cd arch ls Let's clear the screen again. Let's do ls-a. So this is my Arch folder. Um, you can see at the very top, I have an awesome folder with my awesome configuration files for the awesome window manager. Over on the right, the third column from the right, I have a Qtile folder. And you can see the folders are blue. So I have a Qtile folder and that has the configuration files for my Qtile window manager. And the rest are all configuration files. So in the first column on the far left, at the bottom, I have an auto app file. Let's bim into it. Bim auto. So this is my auto app for my Arch Linux installation. And these are all the apps that I download. Automatic, if you run this file, it's going to download all these applications. So I'm not going to read them all, but it's going to download the awesome window manager, the Qtile window manager, the Cinnamon desktop environment, LightDM, which is a login manager. And it's going to download Firefox, um, an ad blocker for Firefox, the full LibreOffice suite. It's going to download and many other files. Now, if you go into the Debian folder or the uh, FreeBSD folder, this file is a lot smaller. 
because Debian and uh, FreeBSD don't have all the app all these applications in their repository. Well, this folder, this file is going to be smaller in Debian and FreeBSD. Let's get out of there. Let's clear the screen. Let's ls a. Now I want to open up uh, another file for you to look at, and it's in the far because my mouse is not working because we're in a TTY, but it's in the far right, the second column on the far right at the top. It's called Run Configs. So I'm going to vim into there. Run Configs, and this is my run config file for Arch Linux. And if you run this, at the top line is going to copy files into your home directory. The second line is going to copy three wallpapers. The third line is going to copy my awesome and futile window manager configurations into the proper place. The fourth line is going to copy my light DM my login manager configuration to the proper place. This line is going to copy my vimrc into the proper place. This line is going to copy my z configuration file into root. This g settings line, this long line with the blue color in it, it's going to set the dark theme for my GNOME applications. This line is going to enable Bluetooth on startup and reboot. This line is going to enable LightDM, the login manager on startup and reboot. And this line is going to set up my firewall. It's going to set up my firewall settings and make sure the firewall gets turned on when you start your computer or reboot. Now this file is also smaller in my Debian folder and in my FreeBSD folder, it's smaller. Let's clear the screen. Let's CD. Let's get out of there. So now we're just back in the mesh folder. Now I want to log into the Debian folder. CD Debian. And let's clear the screen. Let's ls dash a. So this is the Debian folder. You can see it's a lot smaller. It has less files in it. It has the Awesome window manager folder, but there's no Qtile folder because Qtile is not available in the Debian repo. And also my Z, if you look on the top on the far right, the ZRC file, that's for my Zesh. Sorry, Zesh RC, period Zesh RC. That file has changed because I took all the Pac-Man commands for Arch Linux out of it. And there is no auto app in here. And the reason why is when recently I did an installation on Debian 12 and I installed the Cinnamon desktop with it. And after the fact, I installed the awesome window manager. So you can see this folder has my configuration for the awesome window manager in here. But there's no auto app. And the reason why is that when you install Debian, it installs all the apps that you need. When you install Debian with a desktop environment, it puts everything in there that you need. So I don't have that app in here. Now I do have a run config app. If you see at the top, not an app, but a file. If you see at the top, the third from the right, there is a run config file. Let's take a look at it. Vim run config. Now this is a lot smaller than the one in Arch. So all this is going to do is the top line, it's going to copy a few files that I use for my XNRC, my X resources, my ZSRC, Z history file. It's going to copy three wallpapers. It's going to copy my awesome. And it's going to copy uh, my Zesh into my uh, root directory. And it's going to set up a dark theme for the GNOME applications. Let's quit out of there. And let's CD. Now let's CD into, let's clear the screen. Let's CD into mench freebsd 
folder. Let's ls dash a. So again, my free BSD folder is a lot smaller. A lot of the files aren't in there. And again, I don't have a Qtile folder because Qtile is not available in FreeBSD. But there is an Awesome folder because Awesome Window Manager is available in FreeBSD. And in FreeBSD, I do have an auto app because when I did my FreeBSD installation the other day, I did a purely base installation just like I do with Arch Linux. When I did my Debian installation of Debian 12 a week or so ago, that installed automatically a full suite of applications. But when I do my Arch installation, I always do a base installation. And when I did free BSD installation last week, I also did a free, I also did a base installation in free BSD. So I have an auto app. So let's vim into auto app. Take a look at it. So my auto app here, so if you run this file, it's going to automatically install all these applications into your free BSD installation. And of course, it's a lot smaller than the one in Arch. Now, I didn't have one in Debian, but the one in Arch, it's a lot smaller because FreeBSD doesn't have many of those applications available in the repo that Arch does. So it's going to install the Cinnamon Desktop, if you run this in free BSD, it's going to install the Cinnamon Desktop, the Awesome Window Manager, Rhythmbox, which is a music player, Celluloid, which is a video player. It's going to install Libra Wolf, which is a hardened fork of Firefox. It's going to install Firefox, uh, NeoFetch, GNOME Calculator, LightDM Login Manager, and so forth. So oh, that's this, and that's if you run it. Let's quit out of there. And let's CD out of there. Let's CD back into Mench. Let's clear the screen. Let's ls dash eight. So this is my Mench folder from my GitLab repository. So let's clear the screen. So this installation here is Arch Linux. So I'm going to CD into the Arch folder. And I'm going to then into auto app. So these are all the applications it's going to install. It's going to install music player, video player, Firefox, the full LibreOffice suite, login manager and all these applications are going to be automatically installed so i'm going to go out of here i just came in here to show you again let's quit out of there clear the screen let's ls dash eight so to run the file to run the auto app file and you can see it's on the far left at the bottom to run that auto app file you're going to do period Flash auto app. And if you hit enter, it's going to install all the, it's going to ask for your password and it's going to install all those files. All those applications are going to be installed into your Arch Linux system. So let's hit enter. Asking for John's password, I'm going to do his password. his password in just hit one for default hit enter again hit enter again and it's installing 600 packages hit enter again and it's installing 600 packages so i'm going to pause the video and this is probably going to take five minutes maybe 10 at the most and i'll be back So I'm back, I finished installing all those apps. It took about five minutes because Pac-Man in Arch Linux is very fast. So I'm gonna clear the screen and I'm gonna CD into Mench again. I'm gonna CD into Mench. Let's clear the screen. Let's LS. Oh, 
put put CD into Arch. LS dash A. And I'm going to run my run config file. So you see on the top, the second column, run configs. And I'm going to cat into it again just for a second. Cat. Run configs. So you can see in here, uh, it's going to copy some wallpaper. It's going to copy some files over. It's going to set the firewall. It's going to set the login manager and so forth. So I'm going to clear the screen and to run that file, you're going to do period forward slash run and tab it. So period slash run configs period sh. And if I hit enter, it's going to run them. So let's hit enter and it's done. Hit OK. So at this point, I'm going to reboot. Reboot. And it's rebooting. And while it's rebooting, should I pause the video or keep it going? You know what? I'm going to just keep the video going because Arch Linux boots pretty fast. And now we're at the login manager. Now, if we go up here, we can see we have the choice of going into the Cinnamon desktop, Utile, Window Manager, or the Awesome Window Manager. I'm going to go into the Awesome Window Manager. So now, when I log into this Awesome Window Manager, it's not going to be logged into a default Awesome Window Manager. It's going to be logged into the Awesome Window Manager with my configuration file for Awesome Window Manager because we ran those configs. So let's type in my password. And there we are. We're in the awesome window manager, not the default one. We're in the awesome window manager with my configuration file. Open up Xterm, and there we are. We're in Xterm. Now, a few more things I want to explain, and then I'm going to close the video. Well, you know what, this is not going to be really part of the video. Well, I'm going to leave this in the video, but this is kind of like a side issue. What I always do is hold down the super key and hit P and I go to custom. And I always click on Materia Dark and Icon Team is Papyrus Dark and I apply it. Let's close out of there. So let's go to PC Man FM as my file manager. And there we go, we have a dark theme. So we can see we have a mesh folder here. We have some wallpaper, we have a mesh folder. We have my Arch and my Debian and my FreeBSD folders, my license and my README. Now let's say you installed Linux Mint and you want to install the awesome window manager. Well, all you would do is you could go into the software center and do and install it. Or you could install it like this. Sudo apt install. This would be for Linux Mint or Debian. Sudo apt install. Awesome. You could install it that way. Hit enter and it would install it in your Debian. Or you could go into the software manager and install it. Now, the thing is, is that let's close that. Let's go back to this one here. So the thing is, is that if you install the awesome window manager in Linux Mint or in Debian, the default awesome window manager comes a bit more configured than it does in uh, Arch Linux. And it has a menu. Now this menu here is the one I made. This is my configuration menu. Now, for instance, let's say you don't want to use my configuration file for Awesome Window Manager. So you could go into your file manager, click on here, your right button, show hidden. So we're going to show the hidden files. We're going to go into config. 
and you're going to go into this awesome folder. Let's just change the name to P awesome PPP. That's going to stop it from working. And let's close that and let's restart my awesome. So this is the default awesome window manager, the way it comes in uh, Arch Linux. So you can see the, uh, the bar is on the top. It's very small and hard to read. The right click menu hardly has any apps in it. The menu is very small. Now, if you install default awesome window manager in Debian or Linux Mint or MX Linux, it's gonna come with a pre-configured menu and it's gonna have all your apps in here. And, but it's still gonna be small on top. The bar will be small on top and hard to read. It'll be on top and small and hard to read, but it will have an interactive menu. All your apps will be installed in the menu. And if you install a new map, sorry, and if you install a new application, it will automatically end up in your menu. But the default awesome for, uh, but the default awesome window manager in Arch Linux is really bare bones. So the point I'm making is that if you install awesome window manager in Debian or Linux Mint or MX Linux, you might just want to use the default configuration file. Even though it's small on top, it has a nice interactive menu. But if you want to use my awesome window manager configuration file in Debian, Linux Mint, or MX Linux, you don't have to go into the terminal and run that run config file, you can do it this way. Instead of automating or instead of uh, running that run config file, you can do this. You can go into PC Manif M and you're gonna click on, you're gonna go into the mesh folder. Well, first of all, you're gonna click on show hidden. Then you're going to go into the mesh folder and uh, well if you're in Debian you could go into Debian copy this folder into your home directory dot config and paste it in okay If you're in FreeBSD, you could go into the Mensch folder, go to FreeBSD, copy this awesome folder, into your home folder, dot config, and paste it in. Or let's see how it works. So let's go. So now the default configuration for awesome is not working because I changed the name of the folder. So let's go back into John. Let's go into Mench. Let's go into Arch. And let's just copy the awesome folder this way. Because maybe you don't want to run my run. Maybe you don't. Because maybe you don't want to use my run configs file. An automated run config file. So you could go into uh, Arch, let's copy this awesome folder. Let's copy it. Let's go back home. Let's go into dot config. Let's paste it in. So now we have this folder where I changed the name so it's not working. And we have the one that we just copied and pasted in. Let's close that. Let's go here, let's restart the awesome window manager and there it is my configuration file is back in there so i'm only telling you this because uh if you're running mx linux linux mint or pure debian you may or may not want to use my configuration file for the awesome window manager 
and you may or may not want to copy or, or use that run config file where it automatically sets things. So that's how you do it. And that would go for the same of any other file. So if we go to X term, if we go CD mench LS it A. Let's go into Arch. CD Arch LS A. Let's clear the screen. Let's do that again. So now that's a lot better to read than the TTY. So let's vim in. If you go here, now I can use my mouse. So here's my run configs file. Okay. So let's vim into it. So this is the way the file looks like. So it's copying. When you run this file, it's copying all this stuff, setting up the firewall, and so forth. So let's get out of there. And I already showed you this before, but I showed it in the TTY, and it's a lot better to read here. Let's quit. So if you don't want to uh, run, so the run that file, remember we're doing period slash like that, run configs, and we're going to hit enter. But we already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. But let's say you don't want to do that. So you can manually copy any of these configuration files that you want to use. You can manually copy them into your home directory in the terminal or in your file manager. So we could go to, let's go to Workspace 5. Let's open up uh, PCMan FM. And remember, some of these are hidden files. So you're going to right click and you're going to click on hidden. Let's say you just wanted to copy, manually copy the ZSRC file over. So you copy it. Go to your home folder. Oh, sorry, we're in there. So let's say we're in Mench. You want to go into Mench. Let's say we go into Arch. And make sure we're showing the hidden files. So let's say you want to copy any of these files manually into your home folder. You could do it in the terminal or you could do it here. So you could copy this file. You want to copy this file or this file or this file. Just copy it. Go home folder. Right click it. And paste it. And you could manually decide which files you want to copy and use from a GitLab repository my mesh folder if you don't want to run that run configs file so i think that's pretty clear i think i've explained how to use my configuration files now there's just one more thing i want to show and that's kind of a side issue but in this post installation and really that's what this was this video really is a post installation of a base install of arch linux but really, the purpose of doing this was to show people who are new to Linux and who are new to my channel how to use my GitLab repository. But there is one more thing we might want to look at, and that is Zesh is not my default shell. Now, all the configuration files for Zesh are there, but it's not my default shell. So. And this really has, it's not about um, a GitLab repository, although the files came from there. So what you want to do is, to do vim password, oops, Etsy password, put the password in. And you want to do go to the end of the first line and type Zesh in there. It's going to make Zesh the default shell for root. And we want to go to line 18 where it says John. I'm going to go to the end and we're going to type in the Zesh. So it's going to make Zesh the default shell for John. 
and let's save the file. Now, you don't want to do this unless you ran my configs. So if you use my auto app to install all my applications, and if you ran my run config file, then you can do this. But if you didn't install all my apps, if you didn't install Zesh or my Zesh configuration file, and if you didn't run my run config file, then you don't want to do this because you could get locked out of your system. So now we're going to let's close this terminal. Let's log out. Go back to the login manager and let's log back in. Put the password in. Open the terminal. And now Zesh is my default shell rather than Bash, because before Bash was the default shell. Let's see if we can get into root. Put the password in. And Zesh is the default for root. Let's exit out of there. Let's close this. Let's quit. Let's go into uh, Qtile. Put the password in. And now we're in Qtile with my configuration file. Let's open the terminal and that's just the default shell. Let's close it. So let's quit out of there. I'm going to go to hamburger menu. I'm going to click on cinnamon and type in my password. Now, the thing to note is that if you're running Linux Mint, the cinnamon desktop is themed beautifully. The same thing with Manjaro. If you're running Manjaro, the cinnamon theme is also themed nicely. But if you're running pure Arch Linux, pure Debian, or free BSD, the Cinnamon desktop is really ugly and it's not themed and you have to theme it. And of course you don't, with the Cinnamon desktop, you don't have to go into the terminal or configuration files to theme it. You just use your mouse. Now, if you followed this video and did all the things I showed you how to do, a complicated firewall would have been installed. It would have been set to deny all incoming and allow outgoing and it would have been set to automatically turn on whenever you reboot or you turn your computer on but there is another firewall well there's a front end to it it's called g uncomplicated firewall and the g stands for graphical so there's a graphical front end to uncomplicated firewall and i'm only telling you this because when you install linux mint or manjaro with the cinnamon desktop automatically G uncomplicated firewall is installed, but it's turned off by default. So even though in this video we installed uncomplicated firewall and we set it to be turned on and to deny all incoming, I want to install G uncomplicated firewall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the terminal. I know this is ugly. We're going to fix it. Go on text term, let's make it big. So what I want to do is I want to do sudo pacman sg uncomplicated firewall. Put my password in and I'm going to install it. Now, of course, if you followed this video and installed all my configuration files and ran all my files, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you this for a reason. And the reason is this. We're going to go into settings. We're going to go into system settings. We're going to open it up. So this is the graphical firewall. And this is installed automatically with Linux Mint, but it's turned off. And it's installed automatically if you install Manjaro with the Community Cinnamon Edition. It's also installed, but it's turned off. So if you're running Linux Mint, or if you're running Manjaro Cinnamon, you want to go into here and you want to click it on. 
But I put your password in. And make sure that this is toggled on. Now, now it's toggled on now because in the terminal, we installed the uncomplicated firewall and we turned on all the settings and set it. But if you installed Linux Mint Cinnamon or Manjaro Community Cinnamon Edition, guaranteed, this will be installed, but guaranteed it's turned off and it's like this. Guaranteed it's going to be like that. So if you installed Linux Mint or Manjaro Cinnamon Edition, or if you just want to use the graphical front end rather than setting the firewall in the terminal, which I did earlier in this video, you would install G Uncomplicated Firewall, go into the settings, open this up, put your password in, and just turn this on. That's all you got to do is toggle it on. And it's automatically set to deny incoming and allow outgoing. So it's G Uncomplicated Firewall. So that's the first thing you want to do when you install Linux Mint or Manjaro Cinnamon Edition. Or you even might want to use this. Rather than go into the terminal and type in the settings or run my configs. So that's the first thing I want to show you. Next thing I want to do is, now I'm going to hide my face because I always end up blocking things that I'm trying to show in the video when I configure Cinnamon. So let's hide my face. I'll be back. After turning on the firewall, we're making sure it's on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. I'm going to go date and time settings. And I like to turn off this 24 hour clock. I, I like, prefer to have AM and PM. And I'm going to click on display date. There we go. Next thing I like to do is get rid of the printer because I don't have a printer. Believe it or not, I don't have a printer. I want to make sure this volume control is up and it is. And now I want to go into settings. And I want to go into font. And I'm going to change this. there and I'm going to make it bold. Oh, it is bold already. Okay, like that. I like to make it nice and large and easy to read. So next what I want to do is go into uh, settings. Let's go into themes. And what I'm going to do is go here. And I'm going to Add and remove. And I'm going to look for Adara Dark. Because I like the Adara Dark. I'm going to click it on. And I'm going to download it. And I'm going to go back. Oops, I went back too far. I'm going to go back into Advanced Settings. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on Adara Dark. And I'm going to go here to Icons. And I'm going to click on Papyrus Dark. And I'm going to go to Material Light Applications. And I'm going to put on Add Out White Dark. And now I'm going to close that. So now I've made the font. I've changed the settings for the clock for the way the clock displays. And I changed the font to make it larger and more bold. I got rid of the printer icon because I don't like it. Now I'm going to go to. Uh, Change the background. And I'm just going to click it on and click a wallpaper. So now I've clicked the wallpaper. Now I have a wallpaper on. Then what I want to do is see how much nicer that looks. Now what I want to do is um, let's do this. I want to put my terminal up here. So I'm going to go type in xterm. Whoops, I did that wrong. <laughs> I want to type in this xterm and I want to go here and I want to add to favorites. 
because this column is considered your favorites and that's how you put an app there and of course you can pin apps down to the bottom so for instance this is in the sound and video we have our video player clip grab is a program that will grab a youtube video or any video you're watching online it will download it into your hard drive so you'll own the video on your hard drive this is a video player mpv rhythm box is the music player celluloid is also a video player and clip grab is fantastic i download a lot of videos into my hard drive with this clip grab internet we have firefox and of course if you want to pin something to the bottom just go here and you can add it to favorites which is this or you can uh, pin it to the panel add to panel which is the bottom panel here and of course we have the whole LibreOffice suite you know this is your spreadsheet this is your document writer and so forth anyways we're talking about theming cinnamon so another thing I like to do is go into settings this is your system settings and I like to go to screensaver and I like to turn it off it's set to 15 minutes I like to say never and I like to turn it off maybe you like screensaver or I don't know another thing I like to do is go to stand down here power manager and it's set for 30 minutes to put your computer to sleep. Well, I like to turn that off. I don't like it. I say never. And this is set to suspend. I'm going to say ask. So when the power button is pressed, ask. And never put to sleep. I'm going to go there. And let's see. Let's open up our file manager. This is Nemo. We also have PC Man FM. PC Man FM is right here. PC Man FM. You know, we're showing our hidden files, so let's click it. There we go. And the last thing I want to do is the weather app. So you're going to go to the panel here. You're going to right click. You're going to go to applets. You're going to go to download, and you're going to click on download. Now it's downloading the cache. See right here? It's downloading the cache of applets into your system. Then I'm going to click on the weather app. And then I'm going to click on this download button. It's down arrow to install it. You're going to click it on and you're going to install it. So now it's installing it. Now I'm going to click on Manage, and I'm going to highlight this weather app again. And now I'm going to click on the plus sign. So I click on the plus sign, and now it's adding it. Now it just added the weather app, and now that's the weather app. That's what it looks like. As you can see, the winds are coming from the west. It's 26 degrees Celsius, clear sky, sunrise is at 543, sunset is at 901 p.m. You got your hourly rates. You got today, tomorrow, Sunday. And one more thing I like to do is to configure this. So I don't need 48 hours. I like to have this at 26. Let's change that to 26. And I like to enable minute precipitation forecast. So I'm going to click that on. And that's it. And there's Firefox. Now it has a dark theme. So this is how I like to theme my Cinnamon desktop. And like I said, you only have to do this in Pure Arch Linux, Pure Debian, or FreeBSD. You don't have to do this for Linux Mint, except for the firewall. And maybe the power manager and a screensaver or Manjaro Cinnamon Edition. Anyways, that's how I like to theme my Cinnamon desktop. Let's log into 
back into awesome. Now, if you notice, after doing, this is a bonus. This has nothing to do with my GitLab repository. But if you install Arch Linux and you notice Firefox is opening slow, and that might be if you installed the Cinnamon desktop, even though you're not logged into Cinnamon, you might want to do this. So let's, let's open Firefox. See how long it's taking it to open up? And that's because we installed Cinnamon and there is a file from GNOME that's causing Firefox to open up slowly. And I don't know if this is happening in uh, Debian. I don't think it's happening in Debian and I don't think it's happening in the Linux Mint, but it's happening in Arch Linux. Now we see how long it took to open up Firefox. So let's close it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a terminal. And we're going to type in this command. Sudo pacman cap dash capital R xdg and we're going to hit our tab button. It's going to bring up these four files. And this file here is the one we want to remove. The xdg desktop portal gnome. So we're going to hit enter. Now you can use your arrow keys to highlight the different ones. But we're going to do this one xdg so we're just going to type in let's backtrack you're going to do xdg and you're going to hit your tab button and then you're going to use your arrow buttons to pick this one and you're going to hit enter and we're going to remove that file and we're going to type in our password and it's removing it and it's done and we're going to just restart the system we're not going to reboot but we're just going to restart awesome now we're going to open up firefox and there it is. It opens up fast. Let's close it. And there we go. So that was a video to show you how to download and install and use my configuration files. And really, this was a post installation of a base install of Arch Linux. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I am the Linux Mansion.